Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Ardian Berisha and I will be your organizer for this webinar. Uh, today we are presenting one of the most uh, discussed topics in occupational health and safety. Uh, introduction to hazardous material, worker health, housekeeping and hygiene. Our presenter for today is a senior consultant, trainer and coach in occupational health and safety and also a PCB uh, certified trainer, Mr. Raza Shah. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to go over some technical points so you will know how to participate in today's event. Uh, we highly recommend this presentation to be as interactive as possible so you will have the opportunity to submit written questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the question pane of the control panel. Uh, you, must, you may send your questions at any time during the presentations as we will collect and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. You can also use the raise hand function as well, uh, which means that we will unmute you and you will have the chance to ask the question directly to our presenter. Now, without further ado, we will turn over to Mr. Shah. Mr. Shah, please, uh, you may start your presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I am Raza Shah from Pakistan, and uh, I am the uh, director for ISO 9000, uh, for uh, ISO 14000 Shahs, uh, and I am advanced leader uh, for uh, uh, SA 8000. And today the topic we are going to discuss is a, a um, health and safety related uh, topic and it is introduction. Uh, basically these are three topics and we have merged uh, these three topics. And these are introduction to hazardous material, worker health and housekeeping and hygiene. Uh, these uh, three um, aspects have very a great impact on the performance and productivity and uh, goodwill of the organization. So uh, we must be aware of these uh, uh, concepts and we uh, will learn today how we, uh, how, uh, what are the requirements, what are these concepts and what are their requirements and during audits what type of NCRs uh, the auditor uh, normally raise. Uh, so, uh, I am going to start uh, uh, the first concept which is hazardous material. Hazardous material is uh, anything which uh, may cause risk to health, property or environment. And um, many organizations uh, use uh, some hazardous material, but they must uh, use these material in a safe manner. So. Uh, by using these materi uh, materials, uh, there should be no any dangers to their um, workers and to their property and their business reputation. And if, if they, there is any problem, uh, it will be dan uh, dangerous for uh, their workers, for their business reputation, and uh, they, are, they will also uh, be violating the uh, legal laws. So, uh, uh, any business should be aware about uh, the hazardous materials and uh, they have to uh, manage uh, how uh, can reduce the risk and uh, make sure that uh, usage of uh, these hazardous materials are in a way that it is not uh, very much dangerous to the user or to the uh, business or to the uh, uh, surroundings. So, uh, um, if, if uh, somewhere these materials are used, uh, the organization should the um, uh, potential of the risk associated with such materials. And uh, the organization should use the personal protective equipment, so uh, like goggles, uh, like respirators, uh, like uh, um, like gloves like masks. So uh, the impact of uh, these hazardous materials uh, cannot harm the life of uh, the worker or user. And uh, for precautionary measurement, for each hazardous material, uh, the uh, organization should uh, develop uh, and uh, use the material safety data sheet. Uh, so the user can 
be well aware that uh, um, how uh, these uh, materials can uh, have a negative impact to him or to the surrounding and what precautionary measures uh, the user should take care while using these um, materials. So uh, to reduce the accident and uh, we should, must be aware how uh, these um, materials uh, can be handled and uh, we should uh, uh, also take the precautionary measures to avoid any uh, accident. So um, if, if a company is taking care and uh, of uh, handling the hazardous material, uh, it, uh, it will be a, um, beneficial for this organization, beneficial in the way that uh, less time and money will, will be lost due to injury or uh, accident. And uh, um, decrease in cost due to spill or poor handling. And uh, improper shortage of, uh, uh, of storage or disposable uh, chemical. Uh, so if an organization is uh, taking uh, uh, implementing the hazardous material control, uh, it will definitely uh, save its time, its money, and definitely um, it, 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 there is uh, low chances of uh, uh, loss. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, it will be avoiding uh, the, um, any uh, property loss or uh, during the handling, storage, or uh, uh, disposition of uh, such materials. And uh, it, uh, it will also uh, uh, be uh, not very risky for the reposition of the business. Um, and uh, if a company is uh, taking care of uh, the hazardous material handling, it will be uh, taking uh, care of the uh, environment also. So uh, the, the different standards, uh, international standards are also focusing on the uh, handling and uh, management of the hazardous materials. Uh, like uh, the uh, ETI uh, uh, is uh, stating that it is uh, the um, um, responsibility of the organization that uh, a safe and hygienic working environment shall be provided in mind the prevailing knowledge of the industry and of uh, the specific hazard. Uh, adequate steps should be taken to prevent accident and injury to health arising out of associated with or occurring process of work by minimizing so far as uh, is reasonably practicable uh, causes of hazardous inherent in the working environment. So uh, well, uh, it, it is required that uh, the hazardous material should be carefully uh, handled and managed that it may not affect the user or the uh, surroundings. There are also um, uh, some uh, ILO conventions which are uh, 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 focusing on the uh, hazardous materials and well, first one is the workman compensation. The, the, uh, this ILO convention state that uh, the, there must be a, a list of operational diseases and toxic substances trade associated with them. And so for uh, each trade, uh, the list of uh, occupational diseases and toxic substances uh, should be uh, declared or defined. And, and uh, the uh, second uh, ILO convention is Occupational Safety and Hygiene Convention 1981 requires employer to ensure that so far is reasonably practicable chemical, physical and biological substances and against under their control are without risk to health when the appropriate measures of the uh, protection are taken. 
And the next is the chemical convention, 1990, requires employers to ensure that all the chemicals used uh, to work are labeled and that chemical safety data sheet have been provided. Uh, and uh, the next one is the prevention of major industrial accident convention, 1993. And uh, all this the focus of all this convention is that uh, the uh, hazardous material should be a, 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 a taken, uh, handled or many in a careful way that uh, they should not be uh, destroy or damage the health or uh, life of uh, any worker or uh, property or the surrounding. The uh, other uh, standard uh, which is the very popular standard is occupational health and safety and it is also focusing on uh, the uh, on the Zardius material control and uh, it is stating uh, the class uh, 4.3.1 uh, is stating that identification risk uh, assessment and determining control the organization shall establish implement and maintain a procedure for the ongoing hazard identification risk assessment and determination of the necessary control and uh, uh, 4.6 uh, 4.4.6 of uh, this uh, standards also is related to the operational control. The organization shall determine the, these uh, particulars, these operations and activities that are associated with the identification hazards uh, where the implementation of control is necessary to manage the occupational health and safety risk. So mm, where, where, uh, if there is any uh, hazardous material uh, the organization should identify it and uh, introduce to some control to minimize uh, the um, uh, risk associated with this hazardous material. So if, uh, the organization uh, must eliminate the ha hazards or risk. Uh, if there is any, if they, the organization is using any uh, hazardous material, it should uh, mini eliminate the uh, risk associated with this. Uh, hazardous material and uh, that uh, uh, it should also introduce some control to uh, reduce or minimize the uh, uh, risk associated with such hazardous materials. So um, and if, uh, if uh, after this control uh, if there is uh, some residual risk uh, it should uh, take the corrective and preventive action and uh, should use the appropriate uh, personal protective equipment so that the user can be safe while uh, using these hazardous uh, um, chemicals. The, the, another uh, um, standard which is very popular in Europe is the REACH. It is also focusing on the uh, handling and management of hazardous material and, uh, it, um, and there are uh, some other recommendation from ILO and uh, these are the uh, benzene recommendation 1971 occupational uh, cancer recommendations and uh, list of occupational diseases recommendations. So all uh, the focus of all these recommendation is uh, uh, the uh, hazardous material management and control. If you, if you uh, see the cycle it is uh, starting uh, from uh, assessing hazardous material risk and then you uh, need to con design physical and uh, procedural control and uh, after designing uh, the control you have to train workers and managers and uh, then implement control and uh, imp after implementing the control implement emergency response procedures and monitor controls for effectiveness and improve controls as needed. Inventory all hazardous material. So this is a continuous uh, cycle and you have to uh, take care of all the steps uh, and you have to take care of all the requirements uh, to develop an effective uh, hazardous material management. These are some uh, uh, non-conformities which are uh, uh, raised uh, during uh, the audit.
and uh, the first one is the young work hand, uh, handling chemical in in some uh, organization the underage or young workers uh, the worker uh, below the 18 year uh, of age uh, is handling the chemical and the next one is the failure to provide the required medical exam. The next one uh, is the uh, failure to provide uh, the required medical exam. Can, uh, so uh, the workers are not undergoing the uh, medical test regularly. Chemicals containers un unlabeled or labeled in a language worker do not understand. Some uh, containers which are containing the chemicals are not properly labeled or labeled in a uh, language which is not uh, understandable uh, in um, uh, by the workers. Um, maybe uh, this is uh, these are labeled in English language but uh, the workers cannot understand the English language. So you have to label uh, these uh, containers in a language which are understandable by the workers. Workers failing to use the needed PPE. Uh, in, in some organizations, the workers are not using the uh, required personal protective equipment. Maybe these are not available, or maybe a, uh, the workers are not uh, feeling that uh, the use of PPE is the necessity. No chemical hazardous material uh, certificate for the local government. In some organizations, uh, the companies are not getting and the required or legal certificate uh, for the usage of any uh, hazardous chemical or material. Government fines for improper disposal and uh, in some uh, organization uh, the uh, uh, organization is uh, disposing of the uh, hazardous material uh, which is not allowed by the government and government may uh, impose a fine uh, on this practice. So these are some common uh, um, non-conformities which we, uh, we mostly uh, noted during the audits. The next topic is the worker health and uh, um, you, know, you know that worker is the most uh, um, important uh, asset of an organization. So uh, you, you, the organization should take care of the worker health and uh, it is not uh, uh, benefit in it is not uh, to, in the benefit uh, benefit of the worker but also for the benefit of the business because if the workers uh, are not um, healthy or they got ill uh, the operation of the business cannot be uh, done smoothly so uh, and uh, uh, during the uh, the working uh, workers uh, working the workers are also take different parts in the operations and they are also handling uh, uh, the hazardous materials so uh, the worker should be a, a given awareness and training how, how they protect them and uh, they must be provided uh, the necessary PPEs and uh, they must uh, uh, give, be given the medical facility and if they, they uh, feel any, any um, illness or suffer any illness they should be provided with the medical care and uh, uh, there should be not any type of discrimination in purveying of uh, such medical facilities and uh, this medical facility or worker care should be uh, for uh, all the workers and uh, there should not be any discrimination uh, in this uh, way. So, uh, um, it is uh, in the benefit of uh, the workers and as well as in the benefit of the business if uh, an organization takes care of its worker. So, um, uh, there are some benefits uh, for the business. Less time and money lost due to a worker's illness. Uh, it is uh, common if a worker 
is uh, not feeling well or he is ill, uh, the company has to uh, lost money and time. So, uh, increase workers satisfaction and company image in the community. If you provide the workers a medical facility, it it will um, give a more satisfaction to uh, the worker and the uh, company image in this community also uh, get more um, good reputation. And uh, if uh, if a worker is uh, healthy, it will definitely be more productive. So uh, it it will uh, also attract the new customers and the new workers uh, that this company uh, is uh, taking care of its workers. Uh, there are different standards uh, which uh, are requiring or focusing on the worker health. And uh, the one standard is uh, ETI, Ethical Trade Initiative, and it, uh, it requires that a safe and hygienic working environment shall be provided bearing in mind the prevailing knowledge of the industry and a specific hazard, uh, hazard, hazard adequate steps shall be taken to prevent accident and injury to health arising out of associated with or uh, come uh, or with or occurring in the course of work by minimizing so far as is reasonably practical the causes of hazard inherent in the working environment. Workers shall receive regular and recorded health and safety training and such training shall be reported for new or reassigned workers. So uh, if you if you uh, see the content of uh, this standard, this clause of the standard, it uh, is in, uh, focusing that organization should uh, uh, give a proper and working environment uh, to the workers. So, and uh, uh, the workers should be get uh, the health and safety training and uh, uh, these training should be provided, uh, repeated uh, um, after a certain period of time. And if uh, some new workers uh, joined the uh, organization, it should also be provided this training. And if an assignment uh, of a worker is changed, uh, the um, worker should be provided training uh, or according to health and safety according to the new assignment. There are uh, some uh, ILO convention and the uh, uh, first convention is workman compensation uh, uh, occupation diseases as we have also discussed that uh, the, this convention uh, say that uh, diseases, toxic chemicals and uh, uh, should be uh, defined for each, uh, has been defined for each the trade. And uh, the next convention is uh, C7778. It is stating that uh, a young person under 18 years of age shall not be a admitted to employment that have been found fit for the work on the. So uh, there, there should be a, a person who is under age uh, will not be employed uh, or uh, he should uh, not, not uh, be employed in a way or has, will be given a difficult or hazardous task. And uh, the next one is a C1 uh, one to one and this is an employment entry benefit convention uh, requires that employment and uh, entry benefit uh, shall imply include apprentice in the public and private sector during cooperative in respect of the that of the breadwinner prescribed categories of the beneficiary and uh, uh, this uh, if uh, uh, this is uh, stating that uh, in the case of any uh, any um, accident uh, the worker will get benefit uh, associated uh, uh, social security and group insurance and uh, these benefits will be given to the workers according to the uh, position of the worker. 
and uh, there are also some other uh, international uh, guidelines and uh, this is uh, protection of the workers and uh, it, the next is occupational health service recommendations and occupational health and service recommendations and so these all uh, are uh, related to the uh, worker uh, health and safety and uh, it is basically the responsibility of the organization uh, to uh, protect the workers from any accident and uh, provide them a good working environment. There are some uh, common uh, non-compliances we in, in normally note in this area and the first, first aid kit are not adequately stocked. Uh, the company have the first aid kit uh, equipment or instrument or the items that should be a, the part of the first aid kit are not um, available in it. Too few workers are formally trained in the first aid. In some organization, uh, the number of uh, the workers who are trained uh, about the uh, first aid are very few, while the total number of the workers are very large, but the trained people on the uh, first aid are very uh, and uh, next is a failure to protect the health of the pregnant workers. It is the responsibility of uh, the organization uh, to protect the um, pregnant worker or exponent mothers. And so uh, in some organization, organizations are not taking care or, uh, of the um, pregnant worker. And uh, um, it's some, somewhere the medical uh, supplies are also expired. Uh, the items of the first aid kit uh, are found expired. Workers are de denied the opportunity to leave their home to seek treatment for illness. In some organization, if uh, uh, some worker is not feeling well, he is not allowed uh, to uh, go for the uh, treatment and uh, he is bound to uh, work uh, even he is killing it. And the uh, next is the young workers are not provide with the legally required medical exam. Um, in some organization, the young workers uh, um, have not been uh, gone un under the um, medical examination. Uh, and that uh, either they are fit or they are free from any disease. So these are the, some uh, common um, uh, non conformities uh, we noted uh, during the audits. The last uh, topic is housekeeping and hygiene. Uh, to keep uh, the workers uh, healthy and safe and uh, to uh, uh, maintain the image of the organization uh, and to, uh, to uh, maintain the productivity and efficiency. Uh, it, this concept is uh, very uh, necessary to implement and, uh, and uh, basically the working place uh, should be safer and uh, should be kept clean and sanitated. So, um, because the workers and uh, the are uh, spend a lot of time in, in at their place, and if if the the workplace is not clean and not well sanitated, uh, the workers uh, it will have the negative impact on the um, uh, workers' uh, health. So, um, well. By housekeeping and workplace hygiene, we mean that uh, uh, every uh, proper sanitary and hygiene facilities uh, uh, and, uh, are properly cleaned and maintained and there is availability of uh, the drinking water and uh, uh, properly sanitary toilets are uh, uh, available and safe uh, uh, food uh, is available and uh, there is proper uh, clean and sanitary kitchen and canteen. And the work environment, uh, if uh, we, we will not take care of the work 
environment, it will definitely impact our um, operations also. So, uh, um, uh, if if you have the good housekeeping practices uh, and floors uh, are uh, clean, there will not be slipping and uh, uh, the exit routes uh, will be clean. In the case of emergency, if uh, uh, there is uh, any uh, block uh, uh, it will be really a uh, very dangerous to uh, uh, workers. And uh, so the organization uh, should identify the risk and uh, should uh, maintain a control to eliminate these which are um, which are related to housekeeping and hygiene and can impact the health of the workers. These are some uh, benefits related to uh, these concepts and uh, if if you uh, practice uh, the, the this uh, concept and uh, properly uh, maintain your uh, housekeeping and hygiene um the definitely the workplace it will Im improve the efficiency of your worker and, uh, and that there will be very efficient use of uh, time and life time and productivity loss to worker illness uh, decrease in workplace uh, accident and associated cost there will be lesser uh, accidents and uh, definitely cost associated uh, with the accident will be reduced and it will also, also improve the image of the company. And so uh, the previous concept we have discussed, there are uh, also requirements of uh, the other uh, standard, some standard to the worker uh, hygiene and, and uh, and the first one is the uh, 3.1 of the ETS standard. A safe and hygienic working environment shall be provided, bearing in mind of prevailing knowledge of the industry and any specific hazard. Adequate steps shall be taken to prevent accident and injury to health arising out of associated with or occurring in the control. And uh, the next is the safe access to clean toilet facility and portable water. Uh, um, and if a sanitary facility for food, so uh, the, uh, it is the responsibility of the work uh, to provide their uh, worker clean uh, toilet facility and uh, portable water and uh, uh, facility for storage of the food and proper uh, facility for the uh, eating this food. Uh, the, uh, there are uh, some um, ILO convention on this and uh, one is a 120 hygiene uh, commerce and offices convention uh, require that all premises and equipment uh, of such premises shall be properly maintained and kept clean. So uh, and uh, next is the uh, C155 occupational safety and health convention 1981 requires employers to ensure that so far as is reasonably practicable that uh, the uh, chemical, physical and biological substances and agents under their control are without risk to health when the appropriate measure of protection are taken. So uh, um, uh, if, if any chemical or material a company is using, it should be well controlled. And uh, C161, and Occupation Health and Security Convention 1984 states that all members must develop a progressive occupational health and worker, including those in the public sector and uh, members of the production cooperative in all branches, activation of the undertaking. And uh, there are some also some other uh, ILO guidance, and uh, uh, one guideline is ILO art. 120 hygiene commerce and offices recommend 1964 ILO occupations and recommendation 
error to water and sanitation is implicitly included. So uh, it is the responsibility of the organization to provide uh, the uh, water and the properly uh, sanitation arrangement sanitation facility. are some uh, common uh, non compliances we noted uh, during this and uh, one is the kitchen uh, not sanitated uh, the second is the build up on machines and floors uh, in uh, some organization we uh, the dust on floors uh, flooring is in some organization the floors are slippery that is un, uh, unsafe to drink uh, some uh, in some organization the taking water is not uh, tested or it is uh, uh, not suitable for working toilet facility that are more not stored with hand soap soap or toilet paper in the uh, toilets uh, in the some organization not hand soap or other uh, toilet paper. So uh, this is uh, about uh, the today presentation and the, uh, we have just gone through the uh, these three concepts. So it is over from me. Thank you, Mr. Shah, for this great and insightful presentation. Now we will go ahead and take some time to answer some of the questions from the attendees. Uh, it looks like we have a few questions. Uh, the first question for, uh, from the attendees is, uh, can you give us some examples from your own experience regarding the non-conformities you mentioned and what was uh, done to resolve those issues? Pardon? <laughs> The first question is, can you give us some examples from your own experience regarding the non-conformities you mentioned and what was done to resolve those, those issues? Yeah, uh, um, on the basis of my experience, um, in the different organization, we uh, see our uh, um, first but not stop to call uh, local law of uh, the this country and even even uh, some um, organization in the some company we have found uh, the first aid kits and there are uh, tablets available for different uh, diseases but, but law is saying that there should not be any tablet uh, and without the advice of the doctor uh, one cannot use uh, the tablet. So this is uh, one. And uh, in some uh, some or organization, uh, we we have uh, seen that uh, there are the uh, availability of the um, fire extinguishers and other uh, evacuation uh, arrangements, but uh, there is no no uh, any type of evacuation deal. So these are uh, the common uh, in different organizations. Okay, thank you Mr. Shah. Now the second question is, is there a workers' health form that an organization can follow? Yeah, um, normally uh, the different uh, standard required uh, that uh, uh, the organization build a health and safety committee which is composed of the uh, uh, workers from the different sections and uh, if, if there is any health and safety issue this committee meet and uh, solve this issue uh, so uh, it is uh, the requirement of um, almost uh, um, uh, like SEDEX, like uh, OSHAS, like um, BSEA, like SA thousand that there should be a, a, a health and safety committee and uh, a senior manager be in charge or responsible of this committee. 
Okay, thank you Mr. Shaw for answering these questions. Uh, kindly be informed that because of the time limitation, the other questions be will be answered and sent to you, by, uh, to you individually by email. Uh, Mr. Shaw, thank you once again for this great presentation and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. I would like to let you know that this thank webinar you. Uh, will be recorded and posted to our website as well as on your YouTube channel. Once you leave uh, today's webinar, you will receive a survey about the presentation and we would appreciate it if you would complete it and provide us with your feedback. Also, if you are aware of a topic that you would like to discuss and, partic uh, and participants would uh, benefit from, please feel free to write down your suggestions. Uh, we would like to inform you that uh, next Friday we will present a topic on managing the need for laboratory, laboratory competence in the food supply chain. For more information about our next webinar and other news, check our website www.pcb.com. On behalf of PCB and our presenter, thank you for joining us today and we hope we'll see you uh, in our next webinar on Wednesday.